What's going on YouTube? It's been a while since I did an update. This is the new tank. I know I mentioned doing videos of the plumbing, the transition. I didn't do any of that. I was so excited when I finally got the display. I, I wanted to set it up right away. And I did take some time making sure the, the tank was as clean as possible prior to doing the transition. So, you know, a lot of aggressive water changes every week. I was doing almost 50% volume. Switched out the carbon, switched out the Zeo mix for Aquaforest. You know, I made sure the tank was basically as clean as possible before going from the temporary 20 long to this 55 gallon beast. The tank looks great. I haven't had any losses. It's actually been going too well. Some of the corals are exploding in growth. The color's great. I'm really excited to take this tank to the next level. And I've added a lot of new corals, which I'll kind of show you a little bit in the video. Now, a couple changes. I'm still using the Synergy Overflow. This is the updated Ghost one, so it's a little bit different. Um, it, same concept, bigger drain lines in the back, but I, I converted those back to one inch. And the weir, the magnetic front weir, and the, the back weir actually locks in now, so it's just slightly different. Still a really good overflow. I'm using two um, three-quarter returns into the tank, unlike my single return last time. And instead of the lock line nozzle, I actually have the VGA. So they have that random flow generating nozzle. Um, I have a larger return pump to compensate for the large tank. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. And I'm hanging it. Actually, I'm suspending the Nanobox ATI Retro this time instead of using the hanging arms, which is a lot cleaner. Pretty excited about that. From far away, the tank is stunning looking. And I can't be more pleased with this setup. So I did not put sand back in, and the main reason I did not put sand back in is just maintenance. I don't want to maintain the sand bed over time. I don't want to have to stir the sand bed. I don't want to have to take some of it out and, and put new in. Without sand, I could actually crank the flow up a lot, and I have done that. I'm running, I'd say, about 1,200 gallons per hour from the return pump into the display, and then I have my Tunzi cranked all the way up too. I don't know if I'm going to put a jar back in the tank, the Tunzi's doing just fine. I'm really not sure what I'm going to use as a battery backup powerhead, but I'll probably do something in the near future just as a safeguard in case something were to go wrong. Now, what I'm really happy about is the coloration in the corals and the growth that I've gotten in six months. So a lot of the corals that I had originally really weren't looking too hot um, when I left BioPellets and I started using Aquaforce products. So I am probably about the six, eight month mark, somewhere in there, and I, I can't be happier. Um, I actually stopped using their phosphate mix, and I just used the Zero Reactor and a little bit of the carbon. And I'm dosing, as you can see on my little bookshelf that I have there, a bunch of their products. So their energy, their build, their vitality. I'm using a little bit of everything from them. Now, I will say I use the energy a lot. I think it's a really good... Um, feeding for corals. So I'll put Aquaforest Energy in, I'd say every two to three days. Build maybe once a week, Vitality once, sometimes twice a week. And I use their Aquaforest NP Pro and Pro Bio F every day. So just like the program says for their probiotic, you dose that daily. Um, you know, you run an oversized skimmer, and I have the Zeo Reactor there. And that provides a lot of filtration, which I'm pretty excited about. The display tank, um, the, the upper portion of it, really is showing the benefits from that. An original Montipore I had has exploded in growth. I think since January, I've gained almost an inch on one side and almost two inches on another. And it's bright pink. If you remember um, my Sunset Montipore I got as a tiny frag maybe two or three years ago, completely died out on the rock I had. Not died out, but browned out. And it was a long recovery. I honestly thought it was gone. Luckily, Montipores are very forgiving. And it started coming back. It started getting its color back. And then eventually, it just completely exploded. Now it's growing well again, showing good coloration. Um, I can't be happier. And this is a picture of it right there. The Zoa is to the left of that which is very interesting. If you remember those, I got those as one or two polyps, I'd say a year ago, and now they've completely overtaken the rock. So I can't be happier with um, Aquaforce currently, is how I would say what I'm running in my tank, how I'm managing my nutrients. 
I don't have any algae in this play at all. I haven't in months. Um, I feed algae, obviously, to the fish. You can see my algae clip back there. I did pick up a tang, which is pretty awesome um, for the new tank. But really, the display, the look of the display is really good. The coloration is good, and the coral growth is good. So I decided to jump back into SPS. Now, I was reluctant before because I wasn't feeding anywhere near what I'm feeding now. I'm feeding three times as much now as I did in the past. And not just some Aquaforce products. I have tried out the Bean Pets food, and I'm still adding Refroids. But I have picked up quite a few SPS for the tank, and I'm hoping to see them really take hold and grow. On the Nano Reef site, I actually am participating in a grow-out contest through Cultivated Reef. So on my frag rack here, which thank you, Ocean Box Design. I love this blue frag rack. There's quite a few pickups from Cultivated Reef. And in the back right, um, you can see actually the contest frag I have. So I'm starting to see some encrusting on the frag plugs, which is a good sign. I picked up a couple of corals from Aqua SD as well. And they've been sitting in there for about a month and a half. All acros. I only lost a couple, which is a good sign. So I'm thinking that between the Montipores exploding in growth, the Aqua SD order doing really well, and the new Cultivated Reef order doing really well, I'm really going to be on my way to growing some very impressive, harder to grow corals. I'm trying to zoom around and show you a little bit of this frag rack. There's some really nice zoas in there too that I picked up between Cultivated Reef, Legendary Corals, and Aqua SD. I'll have to mount those in the near future between this tank and the cube. But look forward to a very robust and full tank. And why I'm pretty excited to show you the tank today is because I, I had to guess at the growth rate I'm experiencing in six months, I should have a forest of SPS corals. Now, that's a lot to say, and that's a big gamble saying that, hey, you know, my methods are going to create a fast growing SPS mixed reef in a few months. But I really, I really do think that's the case. I've been very excited with what's happened so far with the changes and most people would train transitions see a lot of loss i went from my normal 37 gallon display to a 20 long temporary for a couple months and now right back to a 55 and i haven't had much loss which is really exciting so the biggest change with aqua forest that i've done is instead of the brs2 part i actually switched to component one two three so I'm dosing equal parts of their um, element package, I guess I'll call it. You know, that's how I'm replacing my alkalinity, my calcium, my magnesium. And I actually took the labels off the jugs. I bought the pre-mixed and I just poured it in my initial dosing containers. And I stuck the labels on the outside of the, the container I had. So it looks kind of cool. Um, Helps me know what's in the bottle, which is really nice. But on top of that, I also added an additional reactor with um, the amino acids uh, to dose every day. I think it's like two, three milliliters of um, a mix. Now, I'm not using the Aquaforce amino acids only because it's such a small bottle. And really, I, I didn't want to have to manually dose any more than I already am. So... It's just acro power is what I have in there, and I was able to get a large bottle from BRS, and the dosing pump just automatically adds it in. I'm still using the Zeo Mix from Aquaforest. I'm still using their carbon. Um, I actually haven't had to use phosphate minus because I'm not really seeing a lot of algae in the tank at all. Maybe I'll experience that in the future because I am adding more food, um, especially more coral foods. I'm doing a lot of broadcast feeding um, with some fine phytoplankton. I'm using Aquaforest Phyto Mix too. So I might see some algae and I might have to bring out some phosphate X, but I really think I probably won't have to switch back to that. Nothing else really changed in this sump either. I went with the same blue plumbing and I actually picked up these air, these air lines I'm using as dosing tubes. So they kind of match the blue uh, PVC plumbing that I have already in the sump. The ice cap skimmer is doing a great job. As you can see, there's a lot of skim mate sitting in there and I really considered switching over to a different skimmer, but because I've been using this since the day it released, I don't see a reason to change until the pump breaks. The return pump right there, the, the video that I'm showing, is a Reef Octo, I think that's the 6, the Octo 6, the Virus 6, I guess that's what it's called. Um, it's definitely way too powerful. 
on the third or fourth notch, the water was gushing so fast into the tank that the pipes should have kind of shook a little bit, which was pretty funny. Um, so I actually ordered a Viro Viro four, if I'm saying that correctly, um, which I'm hoping then if I if I turn that on max, I won't experience the same amount of um, violent water rushing. And and the amount of water going through the sump is probably more than is necessary, but. I wanted to provide a lot of flow, and I use those VGA nozzles on the display tank to provide random flow, so it's not like a single jet, it's like a whoosh of water. Um, you can see me right now, I'm kind of playing around a little bit with the lighting in the display tank and in the sump. Using the Apex, so I, I mounted that Apex and a couple of my controllers on the sidewall. I actually took the, the Reef Octo controller off the little display thing because I'm switching that over. Um, when I buy the Apex, I forget module, I think it's the VGA module, so that if the Apex controller loses power, because I'm using the variable speed output on the Apex, the pump will stop working. So I had to buy the extra controller um, so the pump will continue to work as a fail safe. The downside to that uh, is that it'll turn on 100%. So at 100% with the Octo 6, I would imagine it would be very loud and I would be very scared to see what I would come home to. Um, when I had it at like 70%, my uh, rock work started blowing over because there's no sand beds, so nothing's really securing too much down. I don't have anything glued to the bottom of my display tank. So I think if I s lower the pump, um, if it would go into fail-safe mode and it would push out 100%, it won't do much harm to the tank, which is ideal. Nothing else is, has changed. I thought about buying one of those uh, iPad or those uh, tablets that people are using to display their Apex information, but really I, I kind of just use my phone 90% of the time, so I'll go pull my phone up and turn pumps on and off or turn feed mode on. I might switch over to a Neptune um, ATK auto top off in the near future. I've had my Tunzi for like years. It's loud. I've let the pump run dry and it hasn't broke, but I would like to know consistently how much water I'm using and some of the fail safes in there are pretty neat along with just the extra port so I could put some kind of leak protection in my uh, display. Now the original Evo 4, Aquamedic Evo 4 um, dosing pump, still using that, finally hooked up the fourth line like I said before because I'm using AcroPower, has not failed, disappointed, cheapest dosing pump you could buy, one of them. And it's done wonders for me. Now I'm kind of sad because Neptune's coming out with Trident in the near future. So you'll be able to test alkalinity all the time. Not that using a Hannah checker is like going out of your way. But to monitor that several times a day and then have it automatically adjust a dosing pump would be insane. So I don't know. I do need a dosing pump on the cube. Maybe I'll just move the Aquamedic over and then go big one day and just upgrade the this tank and, and add the Neptune dose. My only downside is using the Aquaforce 123, I would need to buy two of them because, you know, I have to dose all three components at once. And that's a, a lot of investment. And you're talking thousands of dollars to automate monitoring alkalinity. That's a pretty big investment. So I'm not sure that I'm going to do that in the near future. I'm pretty much putting all the money in corals right now. Um, and I won't have to put too much more. You know, you have to let them grow. You have to give them space to grow. You can't just add and add and add frags. So I'm putting some challenging ones in here, some of the most colorful and brightest, and I'm just going to wait and watch them grow. Um, I don't really have any negative things with a new setup that I don't like currently. I have tucked the auto top off behind it, so you haven't really seen that. Um, just see me looking in real quick mm -hmm. as I... Uh, and videoing and walking away, which is pretty funny. Yeah, I, I can't argue. I really love the American Aquarium's display tank. It's built like a bullet, thick acrylic. It's over three quarter inch. Um, yeah. So stay tuned. I'll definitely do some updated videos with this and kind of show you some, maybe some more of the Aquaforest products as I've been really impressed. And, you know, I switched over from bio pellets, I'd say the summer, August last year. So I'm on about six to eight months, roughly, using the Aquaforce products after everything's calmed down. And I've seen nothing but coral growth and coral coloration beyond all belief. So now we're going to see if this works the same with Acros. 
if it works the same with acros, um, I would venture to say that a lot of people are going to want to switch to this product. And a lot of the tanks you see in line, which is funny with Aquaforest, they're fully grown systems. So what I like about what I'm showing you now is, you know, this is the beginning of a brand new tank. This is about a month in. We're adding one inch nubs of Acropora species. And we're adding some Miliopora. I am adding um, a, a variety, a variety. I even added a couple new Montes. And we're really going to see how well the Aquaforce products work on a new display in growing them and coloring them up. So my existing corals look great, and they're still growing. The question will be, can I produce in the next six months some outstanding results doing just 10% water changes? And I'm going to stick with um, using Red Sea Blue Bucket. I've been using it for, you know, 10 years or however long, so I'm not going to change that up too much. That'd be a pretty drastic change. But just using the Component 123, the Zeo Mix, and their food additives, we're going to see how good of a tank we can grow. So stay tuned. Um, next video, I should have the return pumps. Actually, just come Wednesday, so I could show you that and maybe some programming things I did with the return. Um, and I'll have to do an update, too, of the cube. I don't really have too much exciting going on in there. Um, I added a blue urchin, some more cleanup crew members. Pico tank is past its six months, so that's due for an update as well. So thanks for watching. Have any questions or comments? Insert below. Happy reefing, guys.